I used to work at a gas station many years ago. I was the clerk in the convenience store that we had, and it was open 24 hours. So, as you can guess, I worked overnights, and when I did, I would be all by myself. The gas station was located across the street from some stores, such as Target and a few others. So, the area would get a lot of traffic during the day. A highway was also nearby, and the gas station was on a corner. At night, though, all of the other businesses nearby closed by 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Things would be very quiet until probably 6 a.m. or so. I worked almost every night for a while and was getting used to being there overnights. It was mostly pretty quiet, and the gas station would get cars here and there, while people rarely came inside between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. The average number of people that came inside was probably about four or five, so roughly one per hour. One night, I was working, and it was a typical quiet night. By now, it was about two o'clock in the morning. I was behind the counter, and nobody else was inside. No cars were at any of the gas pumps either. At one point, I saw a car pulling in from the street. It was a white van, one of those typical creepy looking ones that was kind of old as well. It slowly drove up and parked in one of the spaces out front. I expected somebody to get out of the van and come inside, but instead, the van just sat there for a while. I didn't really have anything better to do other than to watch it, so I did. I couldn't tell who was driving, but soon I realized that they probably weren't going to come inside. After sitting there for maybe 20 minutes, the van eventually backed out. I thought it might leave, but instead, it drove around to the side of the building. There were a few more parking spaces there, and it was now out of my sight. I honestly found this a little bit odd, and in the middle of the night, sort of creepy as well. I always tried my best not to let anything scare me though. After the van went to the side of the building, Probably an hour or so went by. Now, it was well past 3 a.m. Nobody came inside the store, and in that hour, only one car got gas. Then I noticed that somebody was walking on the sidewalk up, towards the entrance. It appeared to be the same man, and he had come from the side where the van had gone before. Could this be the driver? He was wearing a large black winter jacket and the hood was up. He was looking down, so I couldn't really see his face at all. He made it to the doors, and then walked inside. After entering, the man walked to the right and away from me at the counter. After disappearing down an aisle, I focused my attention back down to my phone. Several minutes went by, and when I looked up again, I noticed that the man was just standing there about 40 feet away from me. He was facing me and looking in my direction with an angry look on his face. His hands were in his pockets, and I was confused as to what he was doing. After glaring at me for about 10 seconds, he didn't move or look away. I said hi to him and asked him if I could help him with anything. He didn't answer me and just kept standing there. Then I asked him if he was okay but the man still didn't answer me. I was really confused and not sure what to do. After standing there for a few more seconds, the man then turned and slowly walked out. Then he walked back down the sidewalk and returned to the side of the building. Less than a minute later, I saw the white van drive away and I was really glad that he was gone. The rest of my shift was pretty quiet and eventually, a few more people came in. I was trying to figure out what that guy was doing, though. His behavior was just really strange. I worked almost every night back then, and probably three nights later, I was working. And it was about 2 a.m. or so. Once more, I was by myself, and there were no customers. It was very quiet. Then I saw a car pulling into the gas station 
and I soon realized that it was an old white van, just like the one from the other night. I remembered what had happened the other night, and I just hoped that it was not the same guy. I was already feeling creeped out. The van slowly drove around the gas pumps and over to the parking spaces out front. Then it turned and started to back into one of the spaces. After it parked, the van sat there for several minutes. But all of a sudden, I heard a car door open and soon saw what appeared to be the same man walking around it. He went to the very back of the van and opened it up. A short time later, he emerged holding something that looked like a crowbar. Then he closed the back doors to his van and started slowly walking to the entrance. He was wearing the same thing as the time prior. I had a bad feeling as I watched him slowly walk into the entrance doors after getting inside. He then turned and started walking towards the back of the store quickly. He went out of my sight and everything in the store became extremely quiet. About five minutes went by and then all of a sudden I heard a crashing sound. It seemed like the man had hit something, probably with his crowbar. I heard another sound after that, like he was just whacking stuff. Several seconds into this, he seemed to move closer, and then I saw him appear in the aisle, not too far away. I got out from behind the counter and ran out of the store. They weren't paying me enough to stay in there and deal with it. I ran all the way to my car and got inside. Then I called the police. I waited there with the doors locked, watching the store. I was parked behind the gas pump, so I was a decent distance away from the store. Probably about three or four minutes after I called the police, I saw the guy leaving. He slowly walked out and went back inside his van. Then he drove off. Less than a minute after he left, the police arrived. I told them that the man was gone and we went inside the store to see that lots of things were off the shelves. It was all messed up from the guy whacking it with his crowbar. It was like he had gone on a rampage. We watched the whole thing unfold on surveillance tapes, and the guy was just whacking stuff. Then he calmly left. It was the craziest thing I had ever seen. After that incident, the police investigated to try to look for the guy. They also had a police officer at the store overnights for the next week or so. The guy didn't come back, and I didn't work there for much longer either. I'm glad that I quit that job because ever since it happened, I was really nervous working there at night. This happened back in 2003. I used to work at a Walgreens, and if anybody doesn't know, it's a popular pharmacy store chain that also sells lots of other items. The stores are not that large usually, and generally never too busy either. Most of the time, there's a pretty calm feeling. Inside the store that I worked at used to be open 24 hours. I'm not sure if it still is, but I know that it was when I worked there. So usually, when I was working overnights, I would be all by myself for most of my shift. There really wasn't a need to have anybody else there because I could handle everything and we never got that many overnight customers. I was also able to walk to and from work, which was very nice. I had an apartment that was just down the street and a couple of blocks over. So it would only take me about 10 minutes usually. I worked from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. and it wasn't that late yet when I walked to work and it wasn't too early when I walked back. One time when I was working an overnight shift, everything was going normal, and it was about 1 a.m., I believe. I remember that I heard the automatic doors opening and glanced over to see a woman entering the store. She appeared to be about 40, had dark brown hair, was maybe 5'2 or 5'3, and pretty thin. After entering, the woman looked in my direction and said hi. And I said hi back to her. She then walked down one of the aisles, and I focused my attention elsewhere. 
I was just standing behind the counter at the checkouts. We only had two checkout lanes, but most of the time, only one was open. Several minutes went by, and I occasionally saw the woman, but I wasn't watching her or anything. She just seemed to be shopping normally. But at one point, I was casually looking around, and I saw the woman standing like half behind an aisle. She was holding a small video camera, it appeared, and holding it in a way that it looked like she was filming me or taking my picture. I looked at her, wondering what was going on. It was like she was kind of trying to hide it too, because she was about halfway obscured. I found this really strange. After a couple of seconds of this, her camera went down suddenly, and she disappeared behind the aisle. I thought that it was odd, but not the biggest deal. About a minute later, the woman walked up to the left near the exits. She said goodnight to me as she walked out without even buying anything. I said goodnight to her, but was a little bit weirded out by the whole experience. But after she was gone, I quickly forgot about it. I mean, yeah, it was strange that she was filming me or whatever, but it's not the creepiest thing in the world. Hours went by, and several more customers came in. All of them were pretty normal. When 6 a.m. arrived, I was off, and another coworker was there. I left Walgreens, and then headed back to my apartment by walking along the sidewalk. It was still dark out, and things were very quiet. Just the occasional car would pass me by on the road as I was walking back. The one thing that was a little different was that I heard somebody walking ways behind me. There were footsteps, but at a good distance away. I was sort of curious, but didn't look back until I crossed over one block. As I did, I glanced over, and the same woman was walking. I found this really strange. After I crossed the street, I crossed another, and then went along the sidewalk that would take me all the way back to my apartment. I didn't think the woman would do the same, but she did. That's when I started to get really creeped out. Her whole personality just seemed kind of mysterious. Even when she had spoken to me, saying hi and bye, the woman continued to walk behind me, but was a long way back. Soon, I reached my apartment. I was really glad to see that she hadn't seemed to gain on me or anything. She was still about the same distance behind. You had to use your key to enter the apartment building. And then I had a separate key for my unit. This made me feel better. If I could just get inside. Who knows why this lady was following me. But I knew that she didn't live here. I entered my building and then went up to my apartment, which was on the second floor. My apartment was at the front side of the building, so I could look out onto the street where the woman had been walking. After I got inside, I went to the window and looked out. I saw the woman standing there on the sidewalk. She had her camera out again and was appearing to take a video of me at my window. This was just really strange. I ducked down to get out of her sight. Now she was just taking a video of my apartment window. What was the point of this? After several minutes, I looked again, and she was gone. I went on with my normal routine after that. I would relax after work, and eventually fall asleep. Obviously, my hours of being awake were very different than most people, with me having to work overnight hours. So, I fell asleep that day, probably at around 9 o'clock in the morning or so. When I woke up, I remembered that it was almost 2 p.m. That was a little bit earlier than I usually woke up. But then, I heard the sound of somebody trying to open my apartment door. I walked over to the door and looked through the peephole. What I saw was a woman walking away. I just barely saw her, but it was the same woman from before. I was now extremely creeped out by this. After she left, I didn't know what to do. I watched her leave the building and then walk away down the sidewalk rather quickly. 
I really don't know how she got in. Probably snuck in as somebody else was leaving, which is very possible. I decided to call the police and tell them everything. They came out to investigate, and I gave them all the information that I could. I didn't really know what else to do. They said they would look into it, and after that, I never heard anything more. I also never saw the woman again. It still creeps me out when I think about it. Obviously, I don't work at Walgreens anymore and haven't for many years. I also don't live in that apartment, or even the same city anymore. I still wonder what that woman was doing, though. A few years back, I was working as an overnight security guard at a company. I don't remember exactly what company it was, but it wasn't that popular or anything. I worked at a lot of different places back then doing security. It was an easy job because I would just sit at a desk all night. Literally, nothing ever happened. Most shifts, I would weigh there was no sign of the man. I stepped outside and looked around, but he had vanished. It was eerie and unsettling. I went back inside and called the outside security guard again, but he hadn't seen anything unusual. I couldn't explain what was happening, or why this man had twice appeared at the door with that unsettling smile. I continued my shift, feeling on edge and keeping a close eye on the front door. Thankfully, the man didn't return for the rest of the night. When my shift finally ended, I was relieved to leave the building and head home. I never did find out who that man was or what his intentions were. It remains one of the strangest and creepiest experiences I've ever had during my time working overnight security. Had I couldn't give her a discount like that and started arguing with me, she insisted that I should just give her everything for $3. And she was getting louder and more agitated. I tried to explain that I couldn't do that, as it would be unfair to other customers and against store policy. She became increasingly confrontational and began making threats, saying she knew people who could take care of me if I didn't comply with her demands. At this point, I was feeling really uncomfortable and concerned for my safety. I calmly but firmly told her that I couldn't help her and that she needed to leave the store. She continued to argue and make threats. So I picked up the phone and dialed 911, letting her know that I was calling the police. Upon hearing this, she quickly grabbed the items she had initially placed on the counter and rushed out of the store, cursing and making more threats as she left. I watched her go and made sure she was gone before I hung up the phone. The police arrived shortly afterward and I provided them with a description of the woman and recounted the entire incident. They said they would keep an eye out for her and left their contact information in case anything else happened. Thankfully, I never saw that woman again during my time working at the convenience store. It was a tense and unnerving experience, but I was relieved that I had the presence of mind to call the police and handle the situation as best I could. I'm sorry to hear that you had to go through such a challenging and unsettling situation. Dealing with aggressive and unruly customers can be incredibly difficult, especially when it escalates to physical threats and actions. Your decision to activate the alarm and call the police was the right one to ensure your safety and protect the store's property. It's unfortunate that the individuals resorted to theft and property damage, but you did your best to handle the situation professionally and responsibly. Providing the police with a description and your account of the incident will assist them in their efforts to identify and apprehend the individuals involved. Remember that your safety is paramount and it's essential to prioritize it in any such situation. If you ever encounter a similar incident in the future, don't hesitate to call the police 
and take measures to ensure your well-being. Luckily, neither of them came back while I was working again. A few years back, I worked at a hotel. When I started, I was working at the front desk during overnight hours. The hotel was pretty average sized, maybe a little bit large. We didn't have any restaurants or bars connected or anything like that, but we had lots of rooms. I would sit behind the front desk and most of the time overnights, nothing happened. Here and there, people would come or go, but most people didn't need to talk to me. This made my job really easy and I didn't mind being up all night. The event that I'm going to tell you about occurred just after two o'clock in the morning one night. I was working behind the front desk, facing the lobby and elevators. To my left, there was a lounge area and a hallway that led to rooms on the first floor. Everything was very quiet until a man entered the hotel. He walked inside and went right past me. I assumed that he was staying at the hotel and was just returning to his room. The guy was pretty average height, had light brown hair, and looked to be in his mid-thirties. He walked down the hallway and disappeared. About five minutes later though, he walked by again, this time going down the other hallway. I still didn't think anything of it, but I soon saw him pass by again, this time from one hallway to another. It was sort of behind me, but still in plain sight. It seemed a little bit odd, but there was nothing wrong with it. However, several minutes later, I went to get some water. There was a dispenser in the lounge, and you had to walk past the hallway to get there. As I was passing by, I noticed somebody in the hallway a little ways down. I looked and noticed that it was the same guy. He was standing outside of a door, and it appeared as though he couldn't get inside, but was trying to. I thought maybe he was locked out of his room, or possibly he was trying to get into somebody else's. I started to walk over to him and was going to ask if he needed help with something. When I got a few steps closer to him, he stopped and looked at me. Before I could say anything, the guy turned and walked away in the other direction, disappearing around a corner. It was really suspicious, and I started to figure that the guy probably didn't even have a room. Here, I went back to my front desk and decided to look at the security monitors. We had cameras in every single hallway, but unfortunately, the video quality was honestly quite bad, and any details were hard to make out. I scanned the screens until I spotted the guy on one of the cameras. He walked past it down a hallway, then he went to a door and appeared to try to open it. It looked like he might have been knocking on the door or something. He stood there for a while, then paced around a little before returning to the door. This was too suspicious, and I decided to go ask him what was going on. I got up and walked over to where the guy was. The hallways on the first floor could get a little bit complicated. The second and third floors were very simple, but the first floor had more hallways. I walked to the one that the man was at, and when I reached the beginning of the hallway, I saw him. He was quite a distance down, probably almost 100 feet away. Almost as soon as I was within sight of him, he looked over at me. I asked him what he was doing, and the guy just started sprinting towards me. He appeared to be running as fast as he possibly could. This wasn't what I was expecting, and I moved back and started heading towards the front. The guy was still running and quickly approaching me. By the time I got back to the lobby, he was a lot closer, and I could hear him running. I decided to run out of the hotel and see if the man... After I made it outside, I realized that he did, in fact, follow me out, and he was also a lot closer than I expected. Now, only about 40 feet away, probably. I didn't think I would be able to get to my car on time if he was chasing me, so I ran across the street, and a little ways down, there was a 
24-hour gas station. I ran all the way there. And when I got inside, the guy hadn't crossed the street and stayed in the hotel parking lot. I think he went back into the hotel after that, but I called the police. I reported a suspicious man trying to enter hotel rooms and chasing me when I confronted him. The police were very quick to respond and arrived only about a minute later. They entered the hotel where the man was still inside. He tried to run away, but was caught and removed from the hotel. He wouldn't say what he was doing there or why he was trying to get inside the rooms. After that, I talked with the police for a while and then returned to work. I was really creeped out by the whole situation, but grateful to be all right. That was an experience that made me want to stop working overnights, and I did shortly after. <laughs>